Hello everyone, I'm Shobindu Ghosh, clinical dietitian. Our topic of discussion is link between nutrition, immunity and infection. So to better understand, we'll go through our presentation. See, suppose you own a petrol car, but you want to fuel this car with diesel or with low graded like kerosene. So will the engine of the car sustain for a longer time? No. So if you fuel this car with a premium quality of petrol, which is better than normal petrol, the engine of the car will sustain for a longer time. Our body is same composition. If we get good nutrition, our body will sustain for longer time. It will have no disease or we can fight against infections. Suppose, for example, you are exposed to a community or you are sitting in a doctor's chamber where a patient sitting beside you having a flu or infection is sneezing. The person who is having the less immunity or the nutrition status is low will have the bit more chance of infection than the person who is having the immunity high will have the less chance of inf infections. This is a very common phenomenon. So what is nutrition status? It reflects to the degree to which physiological need for the nutrients are being met. For example, a pregnant lady's nutrition status or nutrition requirement is more than a normal lady. Or a mother who is a lactating mother the nutritional requirement or the demand is more than a normal woman. Or suppose, for example, a children or a elderly persons where the nutrition requirements vary. So what are the things, what you are having, what you are consuming, what you are utilizing in the body? These are called the nutrition status. There are the factors which uh, this is the internal factors and the external factors. What are the internal factors like the age, sex, nutrition, behavior, physical activity and the disease? What are the external factors? How you are handling the food? How you are preparing the food? This is the or the food safety, the culture, our customs, behavior, religious beliefs, fasting, etc. So these are the external factors of nutrition status. Now coming to malnutrition. What is malnutrition? What who has described the cellular imbalance between the supply of the nutrient and the energy and the body's demand for them to ensure growth, maintenance and specific functions. So don't think that malnourished always mean a lean person or a very thin person is called malnourished. Malnourished baby, a overweight person also. So both undernourished and overnourished eat is described as malnourished. For example, a person is taking lots of carbohydrate or fat than the demand or than the requirements, then the person will be obese or the person will having certain chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, gastrointestinal disease, sleep apnea, for women it is polycystic ovaries very common and osteoarthritis. So we have to reach the optimal nutrition, which is very important. So balance, you can see very clearly in this picture that nutrition intake should be balanced with, the, with our requirement. For example, if you look physically fit, for example, your, as per your height, your weight is also normal but you are not taking sufficient amount of micronutrient which is required in the body, then you are also having poor quality of nutrition. So we have to see that it, is, it should be balanced and we should get the optimal nutrition status for our growth, physiological status, body maintenance, well-being, etc. So how will I assess? Assessment is very important for us. Assessment this is a simple formula A, B, C, D. In between A and B, we place and C and D, which will come in a sequence. First sequence, what is that anthropometric measurement? What is it? Anthropometric measurement 
means your height your weight as per your height weight body mass index is it in the normal range or not then you have to check for the waist hip ratio is it in normal range or it is more then you have to check for the skin fold thickness these are all called the anthropometric measurement next come in the clinical methods the signs and symptoms which the doctors look on this that is the color is of your hair color of your eye edema uh, that is the signs and symptoms which is externally you can see these are the clinical methods what are the dietary dietary evolution is very important that is the recall method the 24 hour dietary intake or for consecutive seven days what you are taking we have to calculate both the macronutrient and the micronutrient should be calculated and we have to check that either you are taking more nutrient as per requirement or which are the specific nutrient you are taking in the less amount that is deficient in your body next coming the biochemical or laboratory method of assessment for example in your body there is no symptoms but your hemoglobin is low so when we go through the biochemical parameters the iron ferritin uh, or the hemoglobin level or the serum vitamin d or serum calcium this comes under the biochemical parameters we can assess that these are the nutrients which are insufficient in your body and which need to be supplemented from outside what the recommended dietary allowances said what national nutrition of uh, NIN said, National Institute of Nutrition, ICMR said, that there is a specific need for a male or female, reference male or female, certain calories, certain protein, fat, and other micronutrients. But for example, in the special condition, like pregnancy, lactation, children, elderly people, the requirement varies. And also it varies when the person is overweight, when the person is underweight, then the calorie is not fixed, then this protein will be not fixed, the patient is having some diseases, chronic diseases like CKD, chronic kidney disease. Then the protein requirement should be monitored. It should be less. If the patient is undergoing dialysis, then the protein requirement will be more. So as per the body's requirement, body's demand, disease conditions, the nutrient varies. This is a very interesting thing. The National Nutrition Monitoring Bureau said that India is a cereal-based country. Either we are taking rice products or maybe we are taking wheat products. But still, we are deficient in macronutrients. We are deficient in fats. And see this line, the consumption of the green leafy vegetables, which are the source of micronutrients, we are grossly inadequate. So the servings of vegetables, or at least 350 to 400 grams of vegetables, uh, which is required in our body, we are not actually taking in the day-to-day -day life. And the micronutrient, what does it help in? Micronutrient mostly helps in your building immunity. India is the cereal based. Cereal pulse based Indian diets are qualitatively deficient in micronutrient. We mostly take rice, we mostly take uh, pulses, but we Really take vegetables, we really take fruits, we really take iron or folic acid rich uh, food items, and we are less exposed to maybe sunlight. So, due, due to this, we are deficient in many micronutrients. Some common nutritional deficiencies among this vitamin D is nowadays very much relevant. And if vitamin D is deficient, that means the calcium absorption is not happening, and you will have the pain, joint pain, osteoarthritis, these are very common in nowadays people. Especially in the corporate, we are finding some patients who are sit, who have a sitting job in the corporates from 9 to 5. They are not at all exposed to sunlight and they are severely deficient in vitamin D, whom uh, we, we, we have to administer also vitamin D injections. This is a very important cycle malnutrition infection so for example you are not taking daily diet properly inadequate in daily intake you are not taking the micros properly or you may be deficient in some macros also you are not taking protein what will happen loss weight loss growth faltering for the children lowered immunity mucus damage in turn what will happen disease this happens to each and everybody of us but 
incidents will be more. For example, there are two children in, in a home. One is having a good immunity, so the chance of infection is less for him. One is having the prone to infection more because the immunity is lowered for that child. So the duration of the infection will be more. For example, both the child is having fever at home. The child who is having the better immunity will cope up with the fever early, whereas the child who is having less immunity will have the severity and duration will increase for that child. Similarly, this happens in the hospital. Suppose a patient who is having infection, for example, it is maybe COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever, pneumonia, the elderly patient is admitted to a hospital. Or maybe a younger patient is admitted to a hospital ICU. So we have to check for the nutrition status. If the nutrition status is good, the patient will recover early. If the nutrition status is very poor, then he will not recover early. And ultimately, it will lead to appetite loss, nutrient loss, malabsorption, altered metabolism, which ultimately again lead to inadequate dietary intake. So this is a vicious cycle. Why do we, we have to correct? We have to correct here. That is, we have to take a proper balanced diet, which we will discuss in the slides. Nutrition, nutrition status in illness. What is happening when you are ill? Altered food intake, you are not taking food properly. Digestion is ha not happening properly. Altered metabolism and altered excretion. So nutrition inadequacy in malnutrition during illness. So, see, this is a very important fact that malnutrition is the commonest cause of immunodeficiency worldwide. The factors to help measure nutrition risks are food and nutrient intake pattern, psychological factors, physical condition associated with particular disease if you are having diabetes or if you are taking insulin or if you are taking medicine regimes, biochemical abnormalities, all need to be checked. Nutrition or diet history is very much important. Not only take the dietary recall from the morning to till night is the diet history. You have to ask for the habit, behavior, what is the consumption of oil in the family, how much family are there, who is cooking the food, how the food is preserved. This is very much important. What is the timing of intake of different food, when the person is taking the fruits, etc. Anorexia. Sometimes it is psychological also, the unwilling to take food. Sometimes the young girls is doing fasting or not taking the breakfast properly to lose weight. This is not the right thing to lose weight. If you skip breakfast, you will, you can, you will be more malnourished and you cannot lose weight. So it is anorexia, unwilling to eat. Agusia, dysgesia, that is the taste hampers, the tongue taste hampers. This, this happens when the patient is having chemo. The patient cannot feel the taste of the food, altered taste. Ansomia. What is this? The patient cannot feel the aroma. Patient cannot feel the smell of the food. It is called ansomia. Excessive alcohol intake. Poor fitting. That is dental caries. The patient is having dental problems. Though then it can happen. Fat diet or crash diet, this can impair, lead to impaired nutrition intake. Chewing or salving problem, maybe in the elderly person, or maybe in a disease condition, maybe some problem in the esophagus, the patient cannot chew properly or patient cannot swallow properly. So nutrition will not be absorbed properly. Digestion will not take place. Frequent meals away from home. Somebody is staying in hostel, somebody for office is staying, for a long time outside the home, so the meal are not regular like the home foods. But if you are outside also, you can just choose the healthy options of nutrition. If you are outside also, instead of taking a fried food, fried snacks, you can take some fruits, you can take some fermented fruits like dhokla, idli, bara, and you have also to check the hygiene, how the food is being prepared. Culture and religion is grossly affecting the nutrition things. We are doing a long fastings without knowing the status of our body. Inability to eat, eat for 7 to 10 days. For example, you, have, you are affected with flu, 
infection viral infection then you will be affected uh, you cannot eat properly for 7 to 10 days feeding dependent this happens for the children as well as the for the elderly person they depend on the other for their feedings so these are the biochemical parameters suppose for example the hemoglobin is okay for some person the hemoglobin is 10 to 12 between 10 to 12 is not so much low it is 12 but the serum ferritin is low the serum iron is low then the supplementation is required there is a deficiency total iron binding capacity sometimes we need to check hemoglobin is okay but these are not okay vitamin b12 is deficient in the vegetarian populations Serum protein needs to be checked. Plasma, sodium, potassium, vitamin D, D, calcium, iron, zinc, copper, selenium, magnesium. So these are the things which you can check through the help of your serum blood test. And you can understand what is your nutrition status, where you have to take care. Vitamin and minerals supports immune function. We all know vitamin and minerals are present in vegetables and fruits, which helps to support immune function. So selected vitamins and trace elements support immune function by strengthening the epithelial barrier and cellular and hemorrhoid immune response. So epithelial barrier, these vitamins work, cellular immunity, these are the vitamins or the minerals works and antibody productions. These are the vitamins and mineral works. So you can obtain everything from your daily diet. What happens if there is micronutrient deficiency? T cell mediated and adapted antibody response, nutrient in intake depleted, dysregulations of the balanced host response ultimately lead to infection, morbidity, and mortality. And if the patient is exposed to smoking, alcohol abuse, or in the special condition like pregnancy, lactation, and elderly, the nutrition requirement is more. And in this case, mostly the person is deficient in micronutrients. So we have to take care in this case. Diet and immunity. Adequate nutrition status is vital for healthy immune system. Nutrient deficiency and excess can harm the immune system. So deficiency is also harmful as well. The excess of nutrient is also harmful. Both innate and acquired immunity is affected in malnutrition. Some food can stimulate allergic re reaction also. So now, now coming to the six, second part of our uh, discussion. This is the balanced diet or healthy living. That is daily consumption of a balanced nutrition. What is balanced nutrition? A diet must contain carbs, protein, fats, which we call macronutrient, vitamin, mineral, which we call micronutrient, fiber comes under the carbohydrate only, and the undigested parts and the water. So this seven key nutrient is very much important in a balanced form in our daily diet. This is the dietary guideline pyramid. We need to consume the base of the pyramid. We need to consume in the more amount like green leafy vegetables and non starchy vegetables, which are the starchy vegetables like potato or carrots or beets or these are radish. These are the starchy vegetables. So non starchy vegetables, we will eat more. Fats, the good fats, the omega three fat fatty acids or omega three fats. We will take in a limited quantity, but every day we need to take this like seeds and nuts is very much important in our diet protein which is having the high biological value like the protein coming from egg protein coming from milk products and protein coming from soya based strings are the high biological value protein apart from this the veg proteins which are the different kinds of pulses if you are taking the mixed dal or mixed pulses it is very good for your health that is, next is the main source of our fuel, which is carbohydrate, which we should take uh, in less amount, that is 50 to 55%. And what is the most dangerous part? That is the white part. White thing means the refined flour or the maida. The white thing means salt. The white thing means sugar. The white foods are very bad. Actually, the white foods are the culprits. 
and the burnt food, which are very much carcinogenic, like the tandoor foods. So this is the dietary guideline. But what we actually maintain, actually we are doing this perception versus actual intake. We are taking the base, more of chocolate, cheese, burger, pizza, outside foods, uh, weekly two days for we are consuming alcohols. So this is the pyramid we are maintaining. So how can we expect a good health if our nutrition status is not good? So our choice often does not measure up to what we should be eating. Next important thing, very important. That is the meal time clock is very much important. We should have three main meal lunch breakfast that is breakfast lunch dinner in between the snacks should be very healthy cho choosing snacks you should not take in the snacks you are taking chocolates or you are taking high calorie cookies or you are taking biscuits numkins these are these are bad foods and we should avoid these kinds of snacks so maintain a time and the fixed time every day sometime you are taking your dinner at 8 pm you are maintaining Sometimes you are taking your dinner at 11 p.m. and you are taking a lot of dinner. So, as we know, the breakfast should be a king size. So, you, you have to take a healthy breakfast. Then comes the lunch. Lunch in the lower portion and dinner should be very less. See, the, this is a very easy way you can uh, calculate. That is the non-starchy vegetables. What we sh I show in the food pyramid we should take the half of the plate. If we consider it is as a nine inch plate, so half of the plate, that is 50% of the plate will be filled with vegetables. Then that means you should start the meal with raw uh, salads like cucumber or some boiled tomatoes or beetroots or onions and uh, tomato. You start with, with salads, then take the other the vegetables. We should be less oil or the boiled vegetables. The starchy foods like rice or wheat products like roti or chapati then take a good portion of protein food maybe it is fish maybe it is lean chicken and also keep some milk products in your daily diet you can take some card yogurt yogurt is very healthy options you can take take chena you can take chaat the milk products is very important but do not take the high fat milk product like cheese and butter in higher quantity you can consume, but you can consume in a very lower quantity. And obviously keep two to three servings of fruits every day. And you can keep these fruits in your mid-morning snacks. So you should keep a healthy options of your breakfast. Every day you can change your breakfast. A cereal is must in the breakfast, but in a low quantity, you should keep a good quality of protein in your break breakfast. And the breakfast cereals should be high fiber breakfast cereals. Maybe it is uh, oats, maybe it is um, like uh, wheat flour, chapati, whatever. Or if you are taking semolina also, which is, though it is low fiber, that is shuji upma, you can add more of vegetables. And you can also add omega-3 fatty acids like nuts also. Mid-morning, what you can have? You can have 150 gram or 200 gram of fruits. Either one apple or guava or, the, or a citrus fruit or a handful of nuts or opt for salads. But remember, in the salads, do not add extra salt from outside. You can squeeze lemon in the salads, which will be tasty. Sometimes you can add black pepper on the salads, but no need to add extra salt. Sodium, that is the white food, which is again very harmful for your body. Lunch. Already I have shown that 50% should be with salads and vegetables. A good portion of protein should be there. Card or the dairy product should be there. And also the cereal part should be there. So Indian thali is always healthy. We take uh, lots of things. We start with vegetables, end with cards. So try to take this and see the consumption of the rice. Rice should be less. Right, should not be more. Take lots of vegetables, pulses, cars, fish. It will fool your appetite and take very less amount of rice. These are, these are the options for healthy snacks in the evening. I always prefer the sprouts. It's a very rich in fiber, vitamin C and protein. So sprouts are well, very healthy. You can take sattu water also, 
but try to avoid cereals like this puff rice and these types of cereals you can have puff rice but not with oil or no, not with the namkeen chana chus etc you should have this puff rice with lots of salads and sprouts no very easy what we have to do maintain the signal method what does the green signal means greens means go yellow means sometimes that is you have to pause here red means you need to stop that is less healthy choice of food what are the green signal food green zone the vegetables and the fruits are the green foods which can you can take in abundant maybe in sometimes raw and maybe sometimes in the boiled form the yellow zone is the cereal pulses and the starchy vegetables and fruits which you should take in a limited amount but it should be in your regular diet next coming the healthy options of protein you should keep either two or three options of protein in your daily diet and especially yogurt or curd which builds your immunity is very much important do not discard the yellow portion of the egg the egg yolk is very good and we have a myth that the heart patients or the patient having dyslipidemia cannot ever take the yellow portion they have always have to take the white portion this is a myth this is high in vitamin d choline folic acids and other micronutrients so if you are taking two or three eggs in a week you take the whole egg this is the red zone this is the most dangerous zone which we almost consume every day so try to avoid in this this snack especially in the evening snacks or when you are outside if you are taking this kind of foods rarely it is not dangerous but when you are taking these kinds of food every day this is dangerous for you and which also lower your immunity food preparation is another more important factors how you are washing the foods sometimes people cut the vegetables into small pieces pieces or the green leafy vegetables into small pieces then wash and discard the water then the vitamin is lost sometimes after cooking the uh, like for example you are cooking some vegetables for example bottle goat you are cooking and discarding the water do not discard the water keep this water add it into dal and mix it in the chapati dough so you will get the vitamin and mineral of that vegetables so the preparation of the food is one more important thing how you are preparing you are preparing in low flame you are covering the lid of the cooking foods cooked foods etc while cooking you are covering it or not this is very much important now coming to some functional food the food which boost our immunity every day the start your morning with the ginger tea ginger is very much important to boost the immunity garlic a clove of garlic we know it is very good for hypertension dyslipidemia anyway, but it is also very good for immune build our immunity beets and carrots in the salads helps in building immunity high fiber oats not the processed oats that is uh, that is the masala oats is not good take the raw oats or grind the oats mixed with uh, whole wheat flour make chapatis it will be very good take lots of green vegetables take uh, lemons the high vitamin c food is amla amla is the highest source of vitamin c when amla is not available you take lemon juice you take orange one day you take a sweet lime or mosambi every day it will boost your immunity take green tea after food not in empty stomach it will it have a lot of antioxidants which will reduce the oxidative stress in your body and it will ultimately boost your immunity one more thing that is turmeric which is very important turmeric cotton curcumin and active ingredient of turmeric has high antioxidant value and boost the immune system using turmeric regularly can help immune system boost your immunity so when the turmeric is mixed with black pepper the absorption of curcumin is more so whenever you are taking a raw turmeric maybe a 2 inch turmeric or in taking a glass of lukewarm water 1 teaspoon of turmeric then take half teaspoon of uh, black pepper powder mix it and take it you it, it will prevent from many viral infections or bacterial infection and it will boost your 
immunity and as we know it is having the in inflammatory inflammation uh, it is reduce the inflammation of the bodies so it is very uh, important in if you have some infection in throat or if you have some if you are having cold and cough then you can gargle with the turmeric water it is very very helpful tulsi one half which is available in most of the household it is also very much helpful for for boosting your immunity to have this functional food to in extra to boost your immunity benefits of exercise we know exercise always reduce the dose of medicines improves the quality of life relaxes your mind strengthen your heart and always keeps your weight in check so exercise indirectly keeps you healthy and improves your immunity reduce stress stress by doing yoga meditation if your hobby is gardening do some gardening listen to good music and spend quality times with your family and friends which is very important so reduce if you cannot reduce stress then also the immunity get lowered and you are exposed to many diseases even you are exposed to chronic diseases like hypertension diabetes dyslipidemia this kind of disease comes because of stress junk food kids try to avoid the junk food and mainly the food having the preservative high in salt or sodium the calorie is also very high and the canned food tin food food containing preservatives these things you try to avoid to keep yourself healthy limit alcohol those who are not consuming alcohol i will not recommend to take them alcohol but those who are taking occasionally or maybe irregularly limit your uh, alcohol intake try to quit tobacco or quit smoking we cannot take this substance we cannot say to limit or taking in a small quantity or less quantity no you have to skip this habit you have to quit this habit now end of our topic we will come to a study daily administration of supplement resulted in an increase in the number of t cell increase in the antibody response to influenza virus vaccine there was a marked reduction in infection related illness both mild and severe this result in lesser need of antibiotic usage so if you are taking good amount of micronutrient or if you are deficient in micronutrient if you are taking a supplement the dose of antibiotic will be also reduced you don't have to take antibiotic even in mild cold and cough i have seen that if i have given vitamin c supplement in 500 mg daily for 7 to 10 days the cold and cough reduces so no need to take antibiotic in this conditions relation between nutrition status and immune function apparently healthy malnourished subject nutrition supplements is administered for 6 month followed for 6 month no nutrition intervention nutrition assessment and immunological evaluations were performed at initiation 6 month and 12 month the nutrition assessment is done then immunological evaluation for the total lymphocytes is also done so you can see the blue is after supplementation and it is before supplementation so see it increases 13.4% increase in the mature t cell count ultimately which is increasing your immunity so we now we are conclude the number of t lymphocyte is related to nu nutrition status you will agree the percentage of lymphocyte represent by mature t cell increase significantly over the 6 month period immune function can improve with the nutrition status so to stay healthy you have to choose right food nutrition comes from food but remember all food are not nutritious so you have to choose the right food to sustain uh, uh, the healthy life so thank you very much if you have any question related you can put in the comment comment box stay healthy stay fit